If you're currently using an email host provider like Soho, GoDaddy, Homestead, or even cPanel Webmail, and you've been thinking of migrating all those emails over to Microsoft 365, but you don't know what your options are, you're in luck and you come across the right video because I'm about to break down for you four ways that you can do this migration so that you can choose the right one for your business. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Automations YouTube channel. My name is Will with Local Systems where we help businesses like yours save time by removing those annoying bottlenecks through automations, integrations, apps, and IT services. And in today's video, we're talking about migrating your current email from whatever is being hosted over to Microsoft 365. It is important to understand the options that you have beforehand because this will help you save a lot of time and frustration. There isn't just one way to do this migration. Honestly, everything will depend on a few factors, which number one is how much email are you transferring, where it's being hosted, and how big your company is. Typically, you'll have a few options from doing an IMAP migration, a PST migration, using third-party tools, or if you already have Exchange on-prem, we can also do a migration using Microsoft services. All right, so let's start off with option number one, and that's going to be using an IMAP protocol migration. There's a few pros to this approach. And number one is that it typically works with almost any email hosting provider, and most importantly is going to hold the structure of your folders so for example a lot of people like to create different folders under the inbox and you'll have like marketing legal so by using this type of migration is going to preserve that structure when you transfer it over to 365. it runs server to server so you don't need to touch uh, the user's pcs but the downside to this is that is going to require those users credentials so, I'm, so you're going to need their login information email and password for you to do this type of migration over to microsoft 365. that's one of the cons and another con is that it only moves email so if you have contacts calendars or rules that you want to move this will not be possible by using the imap migration and it can also be slow for larger mailboxes this is best for small businesses or basic webmail hosting providers, such as anything that's under 25 gigs per mailbox. My recommendation is use IMAP if you're moving your email and want a simple automated transfer without doing anything manually. So let's keep going with option number two, and that's going to be a PXT export and import option. So first thing, what is a PST? A PST stands for Personal Storage Table, and it's the file format Outlook uses to store users' mailbox. You can think about a PST like a suitcase. You pack everything from your current email host provider that includes contacts, calendars, tasks. You pack it up, you take it with you, and you unpack it in Office 365. Some of the pros to this approach is that's going to move everything. So that includes your emails, contacts, calendars tasks unlike the imap option that just only moves your email this one moves everything this option is simple because it doesn't require special connectors or anything but there are some cons to it number one is that it is a manual process so you'll have to go per user and help them download the pst so export the pst download it and then re-upload it into the new client with microsoft 365. This can be time consuming if you don't have the personnel to do this. So it doesn't really scale much. Con number two is that it doesn't catch new emails when they arrive. So after you do the first export of the PST, it is going to have all those emails. And when you download them, any new email that comes after that is not going to be in this downloaded file. So you either have to forward those to the new one after you have imported this. Now, this one doesn't scale beyond 10 users because like I said, it's time consuming because you have to go through each client, each user, help them download the PSTs and upload them to the new client. But one option that you can do is one, hire more people to do it, or two, you can write instructions, create a video on how to do the download and the import. And that can help you, you know, scale it maybe over 20 users right 
Now, this one is best for small businesses that are already using the Outlook client on their PC. My recommendation to you is use a PST migration if one, you're already using the Outlook client on your PC and you want to move all your mailbox data over to 365, but avoid it for larger organizations as this can be really a really manual process. And this brings us over to option number three and that's using third-party migration tools. So what is a third-party migration tool? So you have different providers like BitTitan migrations, Skykick, or Code 2 that can handle this type of migrations and can be done automatically. Some of the pros to this approach is that one, it migrates everything. So it's going to migrate your emails, calendars, tasks, and permissions over to 365. And it can handle larger mailboxes on like your IMAP option and PST option. This one can handle 50 plus gigs. And I'm not saying that doing your PST option cannot handle 50 gigs, but it's going to be time consuming as you have to download those 50 gigs of email. It also provides you error handling, reporting, and automation. So if you're in an environment where you're required to keep all of this for compliant purposes, then using a third-party option can be a good idea. Some of the cons for this, it's obviously, it comes at additional cost. It can probably add up quick depending on how many users' inboxes you're migrating. Typically, it will range from $10 to $15 per mailbox. But this is best for mid-size to larger businesses. We're talking about 20 users to 500 plus users. Or if you're in a complex environment that requires compliance. My recommendation to you is use third-party migration tools when automation and reliability are a must. And it's more important than cost, especially if you have lots of data in those mailboxes or you have shared data that you want to transfer. And finally, let's start off with option number four, and that's going to be doing an exchange migration. So for this one, if your organization is already using Exchange on-prem and you're thinking about migrating over to Microsoft 365, then Microsoft 365 provides you a few options and that's going to be doing a cutover migration, a stage or hybrid. So you won't need any third-party tools or PST migrations as these methods can help you do the migration. So let's start off by talking about option number one, and that's going to be using the cutover migration. What it is, is that it can move all your mailboxes at once from the on-prem exchange server over to Microsoft 365. This is best for a small organization, so I'm talking about less than 120 users. Some of the pros for this is that it's a simple setup and it can move everything in one go. But of course, there's some cons to it, and one of them is that you have a short downtime during the cutover and every, everyone will have to switch at once, so everyone will have to be ready. My recommendation to you is use this type of migration if you have a small team that can probably move over a weekend. Option number two is using an exchange stage migration. And what this is, is going to be moving your users in batches over time. This is best for medium companies. So I'm talking about more than a thousand users. This one is best for those who want lower risk, a smoother transitions, and you have the option to, to test smaller groups first to make sure that everything will go as planned. Some of the cons for this is that one, it can be slightly more complex and both systems will be syncing temporarily. Now, my recommendation is Use stage if you want to migrate gradually and need more flexibility. And finally, let's talk about exchange option number three, and that's using a hybrid option. So what this is, is going to be keeping your on-prem exchange server while you're migrating over to 365 and you can keep both running at the same time. This one is best for large enterprises that need coexistence or need or have different compliance that are required from them. Some of the pros to this option is number one, it has a seamless integration and your mail and calendars flow across both environments. And of course, there's some cons and number one is that it has a complex setup. So you're going to need certificates, connectors. My recommendation is use hybrid 
if you need a long-term coexistence of both systems, so your on-prem exchange server as well as your Microsoft 365, or if you need phase migrations for thousands of users. My recommendation for you for the exchange option, it's obviously if you're already using the exchange on-prem, go ahead and use this option. You don't need to use the IMAP or PST method because Microsoft 365 has the built-in exchange migration paths. So you can use cutover for small organizations, stage for medium, and hybrid for large enterprises. One last thing you need to do after you do any type of migration, whether that is using IMAP, PST, or third-party tools, or the exchange migration, is that no matter what, you're at the end of the process when you're done migrating everything, you're going to need to change the DNS from your current email hosting provider over to Microsoft 365. So you're going to have to update the MX record to point over to Microsoft 365 along with the SPF, the DKIM, and the DMARC. So that's what's going to switch your mail flow from the old server over to Microsoft 365. So that concludes everything on the four options that you have to migrate the email from your current email provider over to Microsoft 365. So here's a quick recap for you. So if you're on webmail, you can go and use IMAP. Um, if you're already using Outlook client on your PCs, then you can use the PST option. If you need compliance and you need something automated, then you can look for third-party tools. And finally, if you're already using an exchange on-prem server, then you know it's a no-brainer to use the Microsoft 365 options as they provide those migration options to you. Migrating an email can seem complicated, but I hope that after watching this video, and understanding the four options that you have, your decision can now be made a lot easier. Now, when making your decision, take in consideration how big your company is, how much email you're going to be migrating, do you have the tools, and how much control you want over the process. So that concludes this video. If you liked it, if it helped you, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content, and if you need any help with your business, whether that's automations, integrations, apps, or IT services, go ahead and book your free 30-minute consultation in the link below. We'll be happy to work with you. Once again, my name is Will with Local Systems. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.